Hello Vlogmas, we are back. I'm here with Nathan today. And we are gonna be, I guess Nathan's gonna be showing me some things on YouTube. That's the video. I've had this idea for a while, yeah, just to like show off kind of your YouTube taste, because sometimes people ask me like what you watch or like if you watch YouTube. And I think you've gotten into YouTube, maybe, have you gotten into YouTube more since you've known me? Um, no. <laughs> Do you think your like watching patterns have evolved at all? Been um, influenced by me at all? No. Okay, good. So I'm on the commentary, video essay, internet -y culture side of YouTube, and I guess we will see what side of YouTube Nathan is on. I know, something you're very unfamiliar with. And also I'll point out, because we're probably not gonna show things that we both really watch, we usually watch a lot of like, Cody Co videos together, we listen to TMG podcasts together. Some of these he's shown me before, but I don't regularly watch myself. I actually do listen to some of your like film commentary stuff that you watch. You lead the way. Today I'm drinking a poppy prebiotic soda. And myself, a Trader Joe's sparkling ginger and lemon apple cider vinegar beverage. He got sad when we got home. I was like, oh, apple cider vinegar. Like mine has apple cider vinegar too. He's like, apple cider vinegar? I thought it was just apple cider. I know. Oh, that's good. Okay, good. So I'm a little scared because, you know, I haven't felt this vulnerable since uh, our friends Claire and Kelly stayed over our place whilst we were traveling and they had access to my YouTube account. On the TV. The first thing that comes to mind is, oh my God, what's my recommendation? What's being recommended? Yeah. Yes, I will be judging every second of everything that's shown to me, but I mean, we could do the reverse and I could show you what's on my YouTube, but it's nonsense, so we'll see. So immediately in my subscriptions, John Campia is now live. It is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day to have you our international friends gather around so we talk about our favorite things in the world, movies, movie news, TV, streaming, all sorts of good things. So John is uh, someone who I've followed now for seven years. Wow. He used to work for AMC, the cinema chain, and then he worked for Collider, and then he went independent, and him and his crew do reviews of films, they like touch upon all the latest news in the movie industry. His finger's really on his pulse when it comes to like the room mill, um, you know, actors who have been signed for films, Films, directors that have been put on and all that sort of stuff. So he's a, he's a, he's my go-to guy for all of the sort of movie media news that's breaking. We used to watch Collider. Well, you, you used to watch Collider and I would sometimes watch it with you. I've seen like video essays about films, but not like live film news commentary kind of guys who like live stream. So, so right. it's interesting. And sometimes, yeah, when you're watching John, I'll be like, turn it up. Yeah. Like we, every time we go to see a new movie, I know that John's gonna talk about it. So we recently went to watch The Eternals most recently. And we've seen a, a good number of movies back in theaters again, which is exciting. Because a lot of the stuff like that you may have missed in a movie that is, is discussed, or Little like details. someone else's perspective. Because yeah. he actually reads from the comments, so it's quite nice like getting not just John's but other people's perspective of the movies and what they thought of the plot and all that sort of stuff. And as always in the world of movies, everyone has different opinions, and, mm -hmm. but that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, Nathan's definitely opened me up to the world of. Um, the Marvel Universe, DC, um, definitely like Star Wars and stuff. Before I had seen like maybe a handful of those movies scattered in my lifetime, but now I'm like getting more into the lore and the comics versus the movies and all the different adaptations and the, you know, the commentary that comes out of some of it, which would you agree that a lot of these fans can sometimes be too, uh, or they can be particular or intense uh, or terrible sometimes? Kelly Marie Tran in particular for the Star Wars movies. She right. was, um, she got quite a lot of stick from the fandom because a lot of them didn't like her character and uh, her role within the movies. A lot of racist bullshit and under a lot there. Of toxic stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so some honorable mentions in terms of the movies that I follow. I actually follow New new Rock Stars. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the new trailer for Spider Man No Way Home. So recently, the Spider Man trailer just dropped. <laughs> You're getting into it. And, um, <laughs> I'm straight on YouTube, and New Rock Stars goes straight into like an in-depth like breakdown of a trailer mm -hmm. and like the sort of easter easter eggs we can see within the trailer uh, this could be the origin of mutants in the universe the fact that this is at the statue of liberty well you did mention purple cracks eric so uh and the only other purple crack i know is <gasps> Yay! We could be right in the crack of thanos crack no i think that we're looking at potentially all the souls of you know all these spider verses 
coming into the MCU. I want to see all the different oh variations God. of Kang jumping through that portal. I want Kang to falling be like, out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Sometimes like they come up with some like really wacky stuff that you're like, I can't buy into that. But then other times they actually do come into some like really good. Um, in-depth breakdowns on, on, on particular scenes and stuff. I like the predictions like, oh, is so-and-so actor or character gonna be in this movie? What is the end credit scene gonna be about? And uh, yeah, I would know about none of this really. Next, Steve Wallace. Camping with Steve. Camping with Steve. Welcome to Camping with Steve. As you can see, it's the perfect day to go camping. This guy is incredible. I used to find it like quite ASMR-y listening to this guy. Sorry, I just saw his body bag stealth camping thumbnail and my face was just like, what, what? does Steve do? He does a lot of things. Um, <laughs> he camps, he does like stealth camping. He just goes camping. I don't know what it is about it. I don't know why, quite why I like him that much. When you showed me his channel and you said it was like ASMR and I watched a couple, I started watching them too because it is relaxing. Like you hear him like crunching around in the forest and setting up his camp and then like the crackle of the fire and he's just like whispering or drinking a beer and it's just like there's something relaxing about it. And again, I think we were watching this during quarantine and lockdown so it felt like it was like scratching the itch of wanting to go out and camp and stuff. So I actually followed him when he only had like a few hundred thousand subscribers so I knew him before he was popular uh -huh, uh -huh. and um, I don't know what it was I just even like sometimes he would like cook a meal and like I'd find his meals so interesting because they were just like these <laughs> thrown together Hunch meals bunch. that like it was just like that simple life that I always used to like or I still do I always enjoy dreaming of yeah dreaming of. should we watch an actual little clip of it so we can like hear it time to get some steak on the grill here Obviously, this is not your cup of tea with the meat. I'm like, ah, oh, don't put meat in front of my eyes. I'm gonna dig into this, and <clears throat> I have no idea. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good. Canadian as hell. He does have a good voice that like goes well with like, cause he's not whispering, so he's not trying to do it. But it's just like a chill voice and then like every little scrape or like moving stuff around, it is relaxing. And it's fun to watch him like set up different types of camp. I thought about him when I was making my video about like van life and stealth camping. I might've even used a teeny bit of his B-roll. Cause again, obviously he camps by choice. So yeah, this is Steve. You've watched a lot of Steve or at least, uh, uh, oh Jesus. <laughs> Back in the day, you were watching every video. I know. Number one fan. Steve had a, a tipping system where you could like send him, it's called the buy beer him a fund. beer. The beer fund. Yeah. Explain it. Each video, you send him money and it goes towards his beer fund. It's as simple as that. So like when you tip him at the end of his videos, your name will be on it. Supporting artists. We love that. This is someone you actually got me into is Mossy Bottom. I don't know whether you wanted to do a little description of Mossy. The funny thing is I actually haven't watched much of his content at all, but when you were into camping with Steve and thinking about all this homesteading, you know, farming, gardening kind of stuff, I think I found it. I, I you know, searched for it and I was like, oh, first of all, Mossy Bottom, love the name. So he's in Ireland, which, you know, love the landscape. And uh, yeah, so I sent it to you and, and I was surprised that you actually enjoyed it. Because it's always, it's always a scary thing. It's also vulnerable to send people something and be like, oh, you might like this. And they're like, no, thanks. Nah, I love so, this. Yeah. This, this is great. And what is, kind of stuff does he do? He's, he has a plot of land in Ireland and he runs a complete self-sustained, self-sufficient life on, on the land. He makes a small income, obviously, from YouTube. But again, this guy's, he's not massive. He's got 106K subscribers. How to thrive as an introvert. You've watched all of those. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. How to build a rabbit tractor. What is it, a rabbit tractor? Ah, I'm glad you asked. Does it hurt the rabbits? No, it's like- Is it like it's a- a, a thing that's going towards rabbits and then like chewing them up. That's what I was imagining. No, this thing is- Is it a playhouse for rabbits? It's a hut, a rabbit hut mm -hmm. with a house to keep them warm. Oh. And then what you'll see is <gasps> the rabbits having fun, they'll eat the grass and every day Mossy Bottom will pick that tractor up and then move it to the next plot of... It's basically like having a lawnmower. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Yeah, it's always been my dream to have my own little plot of land and my own vegetable patch. Yeah. You'll learn all I'll you learn need all from these. Mossy Bottom. <gasps> the pigs! My friend Megan has 
these types of pigs, I think. What are my reflections? After having, um, having them now for about a year, and would I recommend them to others? So let's jump right in and answer that first question. No, these pigs are not for eating. Very much, but... But that's not to say that they're pets either. Every animal on my little small holding contributes something or other towards my ability to be self-sufficient. This pig's fatter than the other pig. Here, mm -hmm. um, because this one eats that pig's food all the time. Ah, oh, there's always one of those. Yeah, when you got a pair of pets. You want another kink of mine? Yep. I had this period of time mm -hmm. where I was getting really into MREs. And I think camping with Steve sometimes had those like camp food. Yes. And I like that this guy's name is also Steve. It's actually embarrassing me. <laughs> How many you've seen? seen? He hasn't been posting much. No. Oh, oh. We gotta watch that other one. 1944. So yeah, he'll go through even like really old MREs, dating back obviously to World War II. MRE means meal ready to eat. It's um, military rations, which is fascinating to me because I never really like knew how they worked. So I think like scientifically in terms of food science and preservation, it's really interesting. I always get a little conflicted because I'm like, I don't like the military, but. No, nah, I, think, I think what's interesting <laughs> is just the historic thing of like, the, you know, during these wars, like this is what people would eat. And like I saw some British like, um, packs that just all they were eating was like coffee oh yeah i know it's like interesting choice military and then they got like a packet of cigarettes cigarettes and coffee right how to get the most like calories to get get the most energy yeah. and the most efficient i think ways. what i like is just like, the, like how everything's so compact and like what they can fit in the small space yeah and it's yeah there is some amount of like tetris to it like the packaging is really interesting it's fascinating for a lot of reasons i ended up watching a lot of these as well after nathan showed me and like again it's cool to see between different countries obviously britain has their teas and things that they value in every pack and then like the us has like some coffees and lattes that you can make with like condensed milk and like only add water or whatever um you put your little dessert in like a package and it heats up heats magically up. and then it's like soft it's very interesting the bread's terrible Mm. Look, this is him making tea right now. This tea just looks disgusting. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Looks like like ramen flavor packets. Yeah, looks like chicken stock. Yeah. But yeah, this is uh, Steve MRE. But you've got to play a little bit because Steve, this Steve has like certain catchphrases. Heavy duty. Paper towel. Pretty nice looking amount of food for a single meal. And just like before, the flameless ration heater is issued separately. Looking pretty good. The way that he lays everything out. All right, let's get sat on your tray. Nice, okay, let's first start off by checking out. That, let's get this out on a tray. Nice, okay. Rotten, gross ass, old ass food where it's like, dude, you did not have to eat this. Like you could have just shown it, yeah. that's fine. This tastes tinny. <laughs> tinny. I've like been in a tin for 60 years, I suppose it does. Yeah. Let's have a look at oh my god these thumbnails are like the bane of my existence like this is the sort of content where i'm like okay is this marketed toward children and also why do you have to make these faces and make the fucking thumbnails so loud but i've already watched some of this channel so continue so this guy is pokey rev i've recently started collecting pokemon cards which is a terrible habit, don't get into it. And this guy basically does live streams and opens like old base set packs. Unboxing. Um, unboxing. And he basically says if you subscribe and comment on his videos. He does giveaways. He does giveaways, etc., etc. So I do tend to comment on his videos. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Nathan's I'm like, like nice. I'm interested. I really like the Charizard you pulled. He's very high energy, Definitely but. Definitely from New Jersey. Yeah. He's got that Jersey energy. Pet peeve about the freaking like Mr. Beast titles like that. Like everyone who has a hype channel has that kind of stuff. I like his setup, it looks fun. Um, he is high energy, but he's not annoyingly so. Cause after this, I started to look up other Pokemon like unboxing cards um, videos. And some of those people are a million times worse. Like all the kid channels that are like, what's up guys, today we're gonna be opening a Charizard. Woo! Smash the like button, everybody. Subscribe. That was exhausting. I don't know how people do that for 
an entire video every day. Anyway, uh, sorry about that. It's addicting though. And I'm gonna make a whole video, I think, with Nathan about this Pokemon card thing because there's a lot to it. It's addicting, the consumerism, the capitalist nature of it all. And this has also gotten me back into playing my Pokemon Shield game, which I've made some progress on. Let's watch some of this dude. So let's start off by opening these packs and then we'll jump into this box, which I'm actually really excited about because I really want to see those exclusive cards. So pack number one of Celebrations. It makes me want to open up a bunch of packs, am I right? With something nice. We got a Lugia. Oh! oh! Perfect. Umbreon! Smash that like! Wait, that's really eight good. bucks. Let's card. go! Do we have that one? Yeah. That's what I'm about. We have Umbreon that one? Gold's yeah. our first pack. Damn. We have some good luck today. Reshiram Palkia, Dialga, and Alunala. All right, this has turned into a really good opening. I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes you open up packs and you're like, eh, am I going to get anything good? Since I haven't, like, watched Pokemon in probably 20 years, I don't know how to pronounce a lot of these new ones. So, no, like, when, no, I'm, no. when I'm playing the game, I'm like, because I just don't know anymore. So to hear him pronounce a lot of these is helpful. Uh, Mils I... Milsery. Oh, Metagross. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I like his office a lot because I kind of want an office like that to display my hot toys. Another one of Nathan's uh, pricey collection hobbies. Talking about hot toys, another YouTube channel I watch, which we can just briefly go over, is Jeddah Patrol. Mm -hmm. And he basically reviews hot toys. Oh my god. Why am I surprised? Of course you watch hot toy reviews. I don't know. The battle damage parts up close, as you guys can see, I mean, there's not a whole lot of paint applications going on there. It's kind of it's kind of soft on the paint apps. Cap versus Thanos. Hope you guys like this. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool little. Di it it. I think it's pretty cool. A, a big passion of mine is sport, so I know we're not going to probably go into this too much. But I do watch a channel called The Kickoff. For me, what this reminds me of is like it's a group of friends. Uh, around the table kind of talking about sport. I feel like I'm, uh, it sounds so sad, but I feel like I'm in a round table <laughs> discussion with other um, sports fans talking about like issues. I will say that's probably my least favorite of the channels you watch just cause I have next to zero interest. And I also like Hugh Wizzy, who is a Arsenal fan and also um, does like paper talks and stuff like that. Paper talks? Yeah, just like um, like all the recent news going on in, in the world of sport on the paper and he just kind of reviews all of the papers for you. I love that. Like literal just newspaper reaction. Correct. Commentary. Politics, if you like. Sure. The Novara Media. Which keeps me up to date with all news going on around the UK. Very much a left perspective. Um, but I do like Michael, Ash, and... Wow. What's his fucking name? I wanna get it. Do I have any of their names on the about? Ash and... Aaron. Yeah, I like Navara because I, again, don't really keep up with UK stuff. And it, it was hard for me to find a leftist UK equivalent, like new media kind of stuff. So yeah, I've really enjoyed consuming their stuff. Yeah, I don't tend to watch this as much like now, usually when it's like the elections like like heating up. Yeah. Or if there's like a special election going on in the UK. My final <sighs> subscribers is the Previously Gifted podcast. Mm -hmm. I love the recent episode where Tiffany was talking to this handsome young gentleman. And then I also love the uh, Tiffany Ferguson vlogs, which is worth subscribing to. Mm. And um, Tiffany Ferguson. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, if I had not subscribed to you, that'd be embarrassing. And he always makes sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> I know, I'm always the first one to try and like it, but I never am. Sometimes he'll leave a little comment. Okay, thank you, Nathan. Thank you for showing me your thank YouTube. You. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you end up watching any of Nathan's recommendations, or if you already do, let us know and stay tuned for more Vlogmas. And leave a comment and say, Nathan sent me here. Okay. <laughs> and the other videos. Nathan oh, on the here. other videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, on this video? And then like, John will be like, who the fuck's Nathan? Ah, oh, I feel like I'm naked right now. Okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. Smash the like button, everybody. Subscribe.